So we're very much committed to being here, to passing the legacy on to the next generation, and preserving the authentic African-American cultural experience of the last hundred years on the land that we were restricted to for the first half of the 20th century. Well, I, I can't let you go without asking you, what is really st st stopping the expansion of uh, Black Metropolis, Bronzeville? Is it we don't have enough African-American developers to come in? Is it just pure unadulterated racism? Well, or is the crime factor, the fear of crime? People say, I would love to move down here, down in, well, in this area, but the crime, I mean, the brothers hanging out on the street, man, I, can't, I ain't feeling it. The crime has been transported in a tra chat. The same problems that used to be on 43rd Street are now on 79th Street, all right? So when they move us out, they move the, pro the problems with them. So the black middle class is back. They need to come out of their houses and demand that the drug dealing stop. That, that we create the kinds of commercial business strips where we create a walking community where our children can walk to the corner and get back home safely and buy a lollipop or buy school supplies or all of those things that happens in a stable community. We, that we don't get away from not having that responsibility throughout the south side of Chicago. So we're not just talking about Bronzeville in isolation. We're talking about Bronzeville from a regional development perspective that the South Lake Front, if I could say this, is in fact our MoMA in Paris. Our opportunity to really create uh, parity in terms of resources between the white community and the African American. And please forgive me, this, uh, sorry cutting you off, please forgive me saying the bourgeoisie, but the, but the African American middle class and upper class, it's their responsibility to do this. It, it's absolutely their responsibility. We are stratified historically through class. That is one of the tools that the white supremacists who run this country and control 90% of the wealth uses to stratify us. So the country is built on white supremacy, racism, classism, patronism, and nepotism. That's what we're seeing daily on a daily basis. Everything operates from the top. We have to involve ourselves and rebuild the public trust from the bottom up, which the president has asked us to do, which we work on due diligently by creating groups like the Brownsville Promise Neighborhood Initiative and seeking promised land funding for the entire South Lakefront region of the city of Chicago. We don't think it should just be a promised neighborhood in Woodlawn, which has been practically gentrified by the University of Chicago. We need to really look at that hundred blocks surrounding that university, all the way from the northern tip of the, block, of the Black Metropolis National Heritage Area at 18th Street to the southern tip at 71st Street, and how the residual benefits of having a National Heritage Area will, will help communities like Chatham, Park Manor, uh, 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 Auburn Gresham, and the other communities further south. Um, what, what, what do we look like being preoccupied in a battle over Walmart? Get the Walmart in here. Well, let's get it in here and then let's leverage it, you know. So we don't have to continue to look at these corrupt unions over at MPA where they've almost destroyed the tourism industry by exploiting vendors at McCormick Place and, and, and all the guys in the unions where they were drawing these exorbitant salaries have now had the leaf and they all pulled their pensions and left just recently. So that's why the state is almost bankrupt at this point, not because of, of, of what's going on in our communities. I mean, too many of our young people are caught up in antisocial behaviors and caught up in the criminal justice system uh, before they can go out and become entrepreneurs and own some businesses at 17, 18, 19 years old. If their parents can't afford to send them to college, they got to find some kind of way. So we need to get any kind of eight, nine, ten dollar jobs. We want to put uh, the, the horse-drawn carriages on King Drive, the two-wheel bicycles uh, with the passengers on the back. All those kind of entities that create jobs in the hospitality industry, in historic preservation, in information technology. Uh, those are the fields. Hospitality, training, and tourism. Where's our hotels? Where's our upscale restaurants? Those are the entities that we have to create. So we're working with the Black Wall Street on 75th Street to create a Wall Street project there. We're working over in, on Chicago Avenue on the west side of Chicago, northwest side of Chicago to do that. We're working on Madison Street, trying to help those communities. Wherever we are, have dropped our buggers in our northern migration, we deserve to redevelop those communities from the bottom up. But it's really... Oh, forget it, I can ask questions, but I gotta come back and ask you more questions. Anybody want anybody who said, you know what, I want to help build the old black metropolis. I want to help build Bronzeville, parts of the West Side, can they call you? They can call me and they can send us 
If you want to get involved, here's how you can get involved. We'll put you on our master we'll mailing list. Put you on list. the master mailing list. You're a nonprofit. We're nonprofit. 501c3 chartered by the state of Illinois. 501c3, okay. I can say this on public access. Put Go right you ahead. on the mailing list yeah. and put you directly in response, both on Google, Internet, on our web portal, www bviconline.com we can talk back and forth on how we can get you involved as the taxpayer and citizen in creating the kinds of businesses and services and products we need to have to have stable self-sufficient economically uh, viable African American communities and when this dream does ha begins to happen you don't mind when not if but when European Americans, Latinos, Asians will come here to do business in this neighborhood. We, we work with uh, white people from DePaul University, right. white students. We work with Latinos. We have one of the lost boys of Somalia right now working with us from DePaul University through the Stein Center in terms of the international aspects of this program. I, we're, I we're say that. Races here. That's what I'm saying because what you're saying is actually correct, but the people who don't understand what you're saying think that this is all just the black things and white folks ain't invited. Well, uh, the, the, the America's culture is black culture, all right? Uh, and it, it emanates from every pore of this country. That's why a buddy guy can still be around and open his own club downtown. And if he chooses not to use some white construction workers, that's his business, right? The bottom line is if the union served us, we'd serve the unions. Right now, the unions don't serve us. We need to be serving ourselves. So we want to make sure that we can prepare our workforce in the construction trade so young men can be in the unions and benefit from the process. Give me, give me your phone number. 773-373-2842. Our hours are 12. Uh, noon to 5 p.m. daily. Uh, the gallery is open uh, on weekends by appointment only. Uh, and again, my email is visitbrownsville at gmail.com. We look forward to working with the entire African American community, not only in Chicago, but regionally, to really create a region of prosperity for African Americans in this final phase of the Emancipation Project process, which is in fact economic parity.